Shalom, Mom. First and foremost, I want to give all praises, all honor, all glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shah, Bahashem, Rakakwadash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone for teaching me this truth according to the Bible through the spirit and power of Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shah. And a sincere peace and salutation to all you hopeful of let Aki out there pushing his word in all truth and sincerity, doing the work as Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shah has commanded you to do. So he can wake up and seal the elect of the nation of Israel, which consists of you so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, and you Israelites who are scattered amongst the heathen nations that may look like the heathen nations, but your father's seed line goes back to you being a so-called black, Hispanic, or Native American, one of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. Shalom. It's your brother Halakia from the GMS Denver camp coming back once again through the spirit and power of Yahweh Ba'ashim Yahweh Shah with another video. And the name of this video is, uh, One Day You're Gonna Wake Up in Chains. Addressed to the Edomite nation and the rest of the heathen nations, man. Because that's what's coming upon you, damn devils. You Edomites especially. One day you're going to wake up and you're going to be in chains. You see? And this is inspired by a brother who did a video entitled The Crown. And he, he, he said that phrase. And I'm like, yeah, that's the next video. One day you're going to wake up in chains. So we're going to start right here. Obadiah 1 and 15. It says what? For the day of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah is near upon all the heathen. You hear that? Upon all heathen. You see, you so called white people, you so called Chinese, you so called Japanese, you so called Arabs, so called Africans, so forth and so on, man. The day of the Lord is upon all the heathen. As thou hast done, it shall be done unto thee. Thy reward shall return upon thine own head. All the things that you have done unto the nation of Israel, man. All the things you have done into the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans is coming back upon you heathen nations, man. And you're gonna you're gonna be repaid for all the hardship, man, all the uh, the, the, the torture, the rape, the robbery, mur the murder that you have committed amongst the nation of Israel, man. The chosen people of Yahabashim Yahweh Shah. You see? You damn all of you heathen are gonna pay. And that day is uh, 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 approaching speedily, man. Let's get Zechariah chapter 2. Verse 8, it says what? Thus saith Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shav host. After the glory have he sent me unto the nations, the nations with an S, because all you nations had a, a, a part in uh, destroying the nation of Israel, but you Edomites especially, man. It says what? After the glory have he sent me unto the nations, which spoiled you, for he that touch of you toucheth the apple of his eye. And that's exactly what you heathen nations done, especially you Edomites, man. You see? You see that? And let's show that all of you, all of you heathen had a part in this, man. So none of you heathen will, will escape the judgment that's coming, man. You see? This is Psalms 83 and 2. It says what? For lo, thine enemies make a tumult, and they that hate thee have lifted up the head. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people. You see, against thy people. And consulted against thy hidden ones. And who are the hidden ones? The Israelites, man. The so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. How did we become hidden? It says what? Verse 4 says what? They have said, come and let us cut them off from being a nation. That the name of Israel may be no may be no more in remembrance. And that's what you heathen nations have done, man. You see? You took everything away from us, man. You hid our identity, man. You hid our true heritage from us. It was all prophesied to happen. But all of you heathen nations took a part in this, man. As it goes on to say, verse 5 says what? For they have consulted together against, with one consent. They are confederate against thee. You see that? All of you nations are joined hand in hand and keeping the Israelites uh, downtrodden and oppressed, man. Then it goes on to name the nations. It says what? The tabernacles of Edom, which is the so-called white man. The so-called white race. The main nation that's, that's the, destroying our people. It says what? The Ishmaelites, which are the so-called Arabs of, Mo of Moab, which is the so-called Ch Chinese, and the Hagarians. Let's get that one. Let's, let's see what Hagarians is. And the Hagarians, right? Hagarites, the people dwelling in East Palestine. And it's the Ishmaelites again. It says what? Uh, an Arabian tribe. So once again, the, the, the Ishmaelites, man. 
It says what? Of Gabal and Amalek, which is the so-called Chinese, I mean the so-called Japanese, and Amalek, which is was which is the 1948er, man. You see? The Philistines, which are more which are Hamites, were the inhabitants of Tyre. Ashur also was joined with them. They have hope in the children of Lot. Who are the children of Lot, man? The uh the so-called Chinese and so-called Japanese, man. You see? So-called uh, 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 the Koreans as well. All of you nations have had a part in keeping us down and hidden from who we truly were. And you're going to pay for that. All of you heathen nations have prospered and profited off of us being enslaved, man. Off of us being oppressed. You see? All of you nations have done this. And you're going to pay. So going back to Zechariah chapter 2. It's like Zechariah 1. And 15 it says what? I am very sore displeased with the heathen. That's all the nations outside of the nation of Israel. It says what? I am very sore displeased with the heathen that are at ease. For I was but a little displeased and they helped for the affliction. You see? You nations never let up and you Edomites definitely never let up, man. Look at all the things that you have done unto our people, man. Look at the transatlantic slave trade, man. Look at 1492. You see? Take, you got to take into account how much Israelite blood has been shed on this planet Earth by you Edomites alone, man. You've killed millions or even billions of Israelites, man. And all of you heathen nations profited off of that, man. So you're going to pay. The Most High is displeased with you heathen nations, man. And that's why you see the earth in the condition that it's in right now. Because the Most High is, is, is setting judgment up for all of you heathen, especially for you Edomites, man. You see? So going back to Zechariah chapter 2, it says what? Zechariah 2 and 8. For thus saith Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah host, after the glory have he sent me unto the nations, all of you nations, which spoiled you. For he that touch of you touch of the apple of his eye. For behold, I will shake my hand upon them. And that's what I'm doing right now, man. Through the, through the spirit of power Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah, he's doing that through me right now, man. Shaking my hand at you heathen, man. Rebuking you. You see? And they, and they shall be a spoil to their servants. You see that? And that's what's about to happen to you heathen nations, man. You're about to become a spoil unto the Israelites. As it is written all throughout the scriptures. And we're going to get it. And it says what? And, sh and ye shall know that Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shav host have sent me. Exactly. You see? And that's what's about to happen, man. You heathen are about to pay. <laughs> this is Jeremiah 49. And 12, it says what? For thus saith Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah, behold, they whose judgment was not to drink of the cup have assuredly drunken. Talking about who? Us. We were, created, we were created to be the rulers of the earth, man. Not the servants of the earth. But for prophecy's sake, we had to suffer these things. And it's all good because we know and understand what the end all be all is, man. The roles are going to be reversed. We're going to be on the top forevermore. You heathen are going to be on the bottom forevermore. You see? Under the rulership and jurisdiction of the Israelites, man. So it goes on to say, And art thou he that shall all together go unpunished? Thou shalt not go unpunished, but thou shalt surely drink of it. Talking about you Edomites, because you Edomites really feel like you don't have to uh, repay, be repaid for what you've done unto us. You want to come in a bullshit ass $30 million on reparations, that don't cut it. That, 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 that's, that's not, that doesn't amount to nothing, man. You see, we want you. Shackles and chains, man. Building up our kingdom. And that's what's about to happen. Just like we drunk of that cup of slavery. You heathen, especially you Edomites, are going to drink of that cup of slavery, man. Point blank, period. No questions asked. This is what it is. This is what's written. This is what the Most High has spoken, man. We know that the Most High's word doesn't go out void, man. We know that everything that comes forth out of the Most High's mouth is going to come to pass. You see? This is what's coming, man. Let's get Jeremiah 30. Jeremiah 30 and 16, what does it say? Therefore, all they that devour thee shall be devoured. And all thine adversaries, every one of them, we just got it in Psalms 83. All of you heathen nations are the adversaries of Israel. What does it say about our adversaries? Every one of them shall go into captivity. And they that spoil thee 
shall be a spoil, and all that prey upon thee will I give for a prey. These are the words of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, man. And best believe, the Most High is going to keep his word. So like we read in Psalms 83, all of you heathen nations had a hand in oppressing and spoiling us, man, and devouring us, man. You see? And who spearheaded that? The, the spearhead was Esau Edom, the so-called white race. And, he, and that's why he's going to get it to the worst in captivity, man. And you heathen nations going to get it too, but we want you fucking Edomites, man. You see? And it's going to be a beautiful day when the Most High gives us his power over you heathen, man. And it's coming. As it is written. You see? Let's get Isaiah 14 and 1. What does it say? For Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah will have mercy on Jacob and will yet choose Israel. Why is he going to choose Israel? Because we're the Most High's chosen people. And that has never changed. You see? As the Apostle Paul even told you, has the Most High cast away his people? God forbid. You see? So it says, what in Isaiah 14 and 1? For Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah will have mercy on Jacob and will yet choose Israel and set them in their own land. And the strangers shall be joined with them and they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. Now these strangers are talking about the Israelite foreigners who are going to hear this word and return back to their true heritage. You see, through the Holy Spirit. That, those are the strangers that's going to cleave unto the house of Israel, uh, Jacob because they are Israelites. No matter where they may be, no matter how they may look, if this word resonates with them, they're calling upon the name of Yahweh Yahweh Shah and doing those righteous works. They are Israelites, man. No matter what you look like. And you people are going to see. Verse 2 says what? And the people shall take them and bring them to their place. And the house of Israel shall possess them in the land of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shah for servants and handmaids. You see? Now we know according to the law that we can't, we can't put Israelites in the captivity. So we know that this is talking about you heathen. Let's go ahead and get the law real quick. I had that lined up for uh, a little bit later, but we're going to get it right now because it falls right in line. It's Leviticus 25 to show you that we can't put Israelites in the captivity. So these people that's going to be in captivity are going to be the heathen, man. So Leviticus 25 and 44 in the law, it says what? Both thy bondmen and thy bondmaids, which are slave, uh, uh, men slaves and uh, women slaves, which thou shalt have, shall be of the heathen that are round about you. Of them shall ye buy bondmen and bondmaids. This is the law now. The law of having slaves. It says, what does it say in uh, verse 45? Moreover, the children of the strangers that do sojourn among you, of them shall ye buy, and of their families that you, and of their families that are with you, which they beget in your land, and they shall be your possession. This is, this is in the law. The law calls for us to have you heathen in subjection and in captivity, man. And that's going to be fully implemented when Yahweh Shah returns. Verse, verse 46 says what? And ye, shall, and ye shall take them as an inheritance for your children after you to inherit them for a possession. They shall be your bondmen forever. And that's what you heathen nations are going to be. Now it's going to be a severe thousand year hardcore bondage. And after that thousand years, the nation of Edom is going to be eradicated from the earth. And you and we're, we're lighting up on you heathen, but you're going to still be our servants, man. Just like you see the Israelites all throughout the earth, serving you heathen nations, working in your coffee shops, driving your taxi cabs, you see, delivering your food, cutting your grass. That's how it's going to be for you heathen in the kingdom, man. You see? That's what's coming. But you Edomites, you're just going to be just wiped out, erased from the earth, man. So it goes on to say, but it says what? But over your brethren, the children of Israel, ye shall not rule one over another with rigor. So that's how we know in Isaiah 14 that when it's talking about these straight uh, servants and handmaids, it's not talking about Israelites because that's against the law. This is talking about you heathen nations. And what are they going to do? And they shall take them captives, who as captives they were, and they shall rule over their oppressors. That's what's coming down, man. That's what's coming down. You people are oppressing and ruling over us now, but the, the Most High is going to flip the script, man. It's going to be the other way around in the kingdom of heaven. You are going to serve us in the kingdom of heaven, man. 
Verse 3 says what? And it shall come to pass in that day that Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah shall give thee rest from thy sorrow and from thy fear and from the hard bondage when, wherein thou was made to serve. And he's talking to who? He's talking to the Israelites, man. This is our last captivity as the most high's promise in Lamentations, man. Let's get that real quick. Lamentations chapter 4, verse 22, 21. It says what? Rejoice and be glad, O daughter of Edom, that dwellest in the land of us. Talking to you, so -called white, the so-called white race. The cup also shall pass through unto thee. That's the spirit. <laughs> Thou shalt be drunken. And that, and that cup of slavery and judgment is about to be passed from the Israelites to you Edomites. You see? And you're going to be drunken with it. It says what? And thou shalt make thyself naked. And you devils are being exposed at every turn, man. All through the spirit and power of Yahweh Verse 22 says what? The punishment of thine iniquity is accomplished. O daughter of Zion. You hear that? The punishment of our iniquity is, is, is at an end, man. This is why we see America going out the way it's going out. Because the Most High is about to exalt his people. And take them out of this beat down and oppressed state that we suffer up under the heathen, man. So it says, what? The, pun the punishment of thine iniquity is accomplished, O daughter of Zion. He will no more carry thee away into captivity. He will visit thine iniquity, O daughter of Edom. He will discover thy sins. And that's exactly what's happening, man. You see, you, you Edomites are being visited by Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah, man. You see, because it's time for the Most High to take his people out of captivity as he's promised to do. So going back. I think I was finishing with Isaiah 14. So let's go get Psalms, because all this goes back to a promise the most I made to his only begotten son, man. Let's get that real quick. This is uh, Psalms chapter 2. We'll start at 7. I will declare the decree. Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah have said unto me, Thou art my son. This day have I begotten thee. Ask of me, and I shall give thee the heathen for thine inheritance. This is the most High talking to Yahweh Shah. You see? He promised to do what? Give the heathen to Yahweh Shah for an inheritance, man. For a possession. You see? As property. Meaning that you heathen nations really belong to Yahweh Shah. The only begotten son, the one you ignorantly call Jesus Christ, man. He owns you. And he's coming back, he's coming back to the earth to establish that order. You see? And take his inheritance as he as is being given unto him by the heavenly father Yahweh. Psalms 2 and 8 says what? And the uttermost parts of the earth for thy possession. The entire planet earth, is, 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 is it belongs to Yahweh Shah, man. Verse 9 says what? Thou shalt break them with a rod of iron. Thou shalt dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. And that's what we're going to be doing to you, heathen nations. And I say we because what? What did Yahweh Shah tell us in Revelation? Did not Yahweh Shah make us, make us that same promise the most I made unto him? Let's get it real quick. Revelation chapter 2, verse 25, it says what? But that which ye have already hold fast till I come. And he that overcometh, and that's it's talking about hold fast is what? Hold fast is truth, man. Hold fast is word. Hold fast is faith, man. You see? And never let it go. No matter what these people may come and try to threaten us with, we're going to continue to ride with Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah, man. Verse 26 says what? And he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end, to him will I give power over the nations. So us that overcome, Lord willing, I'll be a part of that number. Lord willing, we all be a part of that number. You see, you brothers who are here doing this work in truth and sincerity. You sisters that, that, are, that are humbling down and being obedient unto your man. Or waiting for the most high to send you a man of the Lord. Lord willing, we'll be a part of that remnant. You see? Because Yahweh shall promise to do what? And he that overcometh, Revelation 2 and 26. And he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end. To him will I give power over the nations, man. So just like the most high gave Yahweh shall. The heathen for an inheritance. Yahweh Shah said, if we overcome and endure until the end, he's going to give us a uh, power over the nations, man. And what are we going to do? Verse 27 says what? And he shall rule them with a rod of iron. Let's go into that word rod, man. What is that word rod going to? Strong's G, 4464. Hrabdas. Hrabdas. Krabdas. <laughs> it says what? Get to the point. When applied to kings, and that's what Yahweh Shah is making us, man. Kings and priests unto our Lord, uh, our Heavenly Father Yahweh. You see? So when applied to kings, which, which is to us, with a rod of iron indicates the, the severest, most rigorous rule, man. We're going to rule over you heathen nations with rigor, man. 
complete rigor. You see? Just as you have done unto us, man. Going all the way back to what the, the first uh, scripture we read in Obadiah 1 and 15. Everything that you've done unto us is going to come back upon you, man. Even more so because, hey, we're going to be on another level in the kingdom of heaven. So it says what? When applied to kings with a rod of iron indicates the severest, most rigorous rule. And that's the type of power your is going to give us when he returns, man. So Revelation 2 and 27 says what? And he shall rule them with a rod of iron. As the vessels of a potter, shall they be broken to shivers. You hear that? We're going to be, we going to beat you heathen down, man. And we're going we gonna to destroy you fucking Edomites, man. Best believe that. You see? It says what? Even as I received of my father. Going back to what? Psalm chapter 2. So we continue to endure. We're going to be made co as with Yahweh Shai. And we, everything Yahweh Shai get, we're going to get. And that includes you heathen nations beginning with you Edomites, man. Beginning with the so-called white race. You see? Point blank period, man. Now, is this unfair? Is this harsh? No, man. You did it unto us. And that's what the scriptures call for. This is righteous judgment. This is justice that we're going to receive, man. While you jakes are walk, walk, walking around here thinking that you got a victory over this damn Derek Chauvin shit, we're looking for the real victory that's going to come from you. How about you? How about man? Real reparations, man. You see, the sovereignty on the earth, man. Com supreme power and domain over the entire planet Earth. Not fucking just Texas or some shit like that, man. The entire planet Earth is about to be given over into our hands. And that includes all the resources, which and what what some of those what some of the resources on the earth? The humans, man. <laughs> and I say it that way because we're gonna be gods, man. We're gonna be we're gonna be above you 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 uh you mere mortals, man. You see? And that's what the law calls for, man, because when you go to Revelation 13, it says what? We'll start at nine. If any man have an ear, let him hear. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Let's read that one more time, man. Revelation 13 and 10. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. So you heathen nations, beginning with you Edomites, you led us into captivity, man. And we're still in your hand till this day. You never let us go. You never took us back to our homeland. You never took us back to the land of Israel. We're still here in captivity serving you, you heathen till this day. And that's for Israelites all throughout the earth, man. So he that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. That's the I-49242, man. It's only right. This is true justice, man. And that's what the Most High is about to bring to us, man. Through Yahweh Shai. And this is what we're waiting for. We don't want shit from Esau. Except for his neck to be in a goddamn feather. You see? The only thing we want from these devils is, 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 is to shackle his ass up and put his ass in the field, man. And that's exactly what's going to happen in the kingdom of heaven. So, Revel and I'm going to get a couple of those real quick. Revelation 13 and 10 says what? He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. And how did Esau get the land of America, man? He stole it from our brothers, the so-called uh, 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 Native Americans and Hispanics, man. And he has to pay for that as well. And that's why we're going to do unto him double as he has done unto us. Man, we're man, we going to tear you Edomites up, man. To shreds, literally. You see? Here is the patience and the faith of the saints, man. You see? Now, let's get a few of these real quick. Let's get Isaiah 60 to show you what you're going to be doing in our kingdom, man. Isaiah 60. To show you that you heathen, oh, you're going to pay. Let me see. Oh, yeah. Yep. Isaiah 60 and 10 says what? This, this whole chapter goes into the kingdom of heaven, man. Isaiah 60 and 10 says what? And the sons of strangers shall build up thy walls. And their kings shall minister unto thee. When you go into that word minister, it goes to serve, man. The kings of the heathen nations are going to serve us. As Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai has called for, man. And there is nothing you can do to stop it. This is going to happen. Just like everything else happened, man. The most I promised to take us out of Egypt, he did that. Took us into the land of Canaan as he promised, that happened. 
He promised that if we didn't take heed to what he told us to do, he would put us up under the curses. And guess where we find ourselves? In Babylon the Great and all throughout the earth, up under the curses, man. Everything has come to pass just as the Heavenly Father said. And, hey, this is coming as well, as the Most High has promised. Isaiah 60 and 10, and the, and the sons of strangers shall build up thy walls, and their kings shall minister unto thee. For in my wrath I smote thee, put us up under them curses, because of what? Our transgressions, our disobedience, our fuck-ups, we fucked up. The Israelites messed up, man. We messed up. And and, and, in, the, in, the, and in his wrath and fury, hey, the Most High destroyed us, man. Straight up. But he says what? But in my favor have I had mercy on on thee. And that's what he's going to have, man. He's going to have mercy upon his children, man. And that mercy began with what? Him sending us Yahweh Shah. The water Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah. You see? Verse 11 says what? Therefore thy gates shall be open continually. They shall not be shut day nor night. That men may bring unto thee the forces of the Gentiles, which is what? The wealth of the heathen nations. All that's going to be bought unto us, man. Because it belongs to us anyway. It says what? And that their kings may be brought to do what? To serve us. You see, to bow the knee, man. And if you don't, what does verse 12 say? For the nation and the kingdom that will not serve thee shall perish. Yeah, those nations shall be utterly wasted. Point blank, period, man. We're not playing with you heathen, man. Get down or lay down. And that's what it's going to be in the kingdom of heaven, man. And if you don't get down, we're going to completely destroy your ass. And this is why Esau is going to be wiped out, man. He has to go because he will never bend the knee. He will always be someone trying to uh, overthrow Yahweh Shai, man. Someone in the corner plotting and scheming how he can overthrow the Israelites. And so just to get rid of that problem, we're going to get rid of Esau, man. You Edomites are going to be eradicated, terminated, exterminated from the earth, man. You see? We'll jump down to verse 14. It says what? The sons also of them that afflicted thee Shall come bending unto thee, and all they that despise thee shall bow themselves down at the soles of thy feet. This is what's coming. And they shall call thee the, the city of Yahweh, the Zion of the Holy One of Israel. Let's get another one real quick. And that's what's coming, man. Yup. Isaiah 61 uh, and 5 it says, What? And strangers shall stand and feed your flocks, and the sons of the alien. Shall be a plowman and vine dresser. You heathen going to work. I want, I want a big ass garden. You see? I want a big ass vineyard. You heathen are going to work. The only day of rest you're going to get is on the Sabbath day. And you're going to love when that double Sabbath hit. You see? But you heathen are going to work in our kingdom, man. Just like you got a slave in fucking... 9, 10, 12 hours a day over here in Babylon the Great. Hey, it's going to be even worse in the kingdom of heaven for you heathen, man. You see? Especially for that first thousand years. So now, I get this and I wrap it up, man. Hey, heathen, you heathen must know, man. One day you're going to wake up in chains, man. <laughs> Straight up. Let's, let's get Psalms 149 and I ended on this, man. And I'm going to read this whole chapter. This is Psalms 149 and 1. It says what? Praise ye Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shah. Sing unto Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shah a new song. And that's what we're doing, man. We're singing the new song. You see? We ain't singing that song of, oh, all nations is one and Esau can make it and God loves everybody. No, man. That's off. That ain't what the scriptures call for as we're reading. The most I was about to put you heathen nations up under our foot. You see? So this is that new song we're singing, man. The, the reestablishment of the tabernacle of David, man. As the Most High Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah has prophesied. And he will bring it to pass. As it is written. Psalms 149 and 1, it says, What? Praise ye Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah. Sing unto Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah a new song. And his praise in the congregation of saints, which are the Israelites. Verse 2. Let Israel rejoice in him that made him. Let the children of Zion be joyful in their king. And that's what we are, man. Because we see that we have next up, man. You see, we see that we have next up, man. And we say the water to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah, man. You see? Verse 3 says what? Let them praise his name in the dance. Let them sing praises unto him with the timbrel and harp. For Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah taketh pleasure in his people. His people. Which are who? Get it real quick. 
Exodus 3 and 10. Come now therefore, and I will send thee unto Pharaoh, that thou mayest bring forth my people, my people, the children of Israel out of Egypt. That's who the Most High's people is, man. The Israelites, not all nations. The Most High has never dealt with all nations, and he will never deal with all nations, man. He's only dealing with the Israelites as it is written, as he has spoken. Psalms 149 and 4 says what? For Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah taketh pleasure in his people. He will beautify the meek with salvation. And that's the remnant, man. Verse 5 says what? Let the saints be joyful in glory. Let them sing aloud upon their beds. Now, this is talking about the kingdom of heaven. And we're going to rejoice every morning, man. Because we, hey, this nightmare that we're suffering here is finally going to be over, man. Verse 6 says what? Let, them, let the high praises of the Most High be in their mouth and a two-edged sword in their hand. To do what? To execute vengeance upon the heathen and punishments upon the people. You see that? To execute vengeance upon the heathen. Why? For what they have done unto us, man. And punishments upon the people. To bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron. You see that? This is what's coming. And all of you Jakes who are fighting against this, man, the most I'm going to put your ass to death, man, because you're not in your right mind. This is a beautiful thing the Most High is about to do for us, man. To give us dominion over the planet Earth and over all heathen nations. To get some payback finally, man. This is going to be your power, man. It's going to be beautiful. Psalms 149 and 8 says what? To bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron. Verse 9 says what? To execute upon them. Let's, let's read 8 one more time. <laughs> Psalms 149 and 8 says what? To bind their kings with chains and their nobles with feathers of iron, beginning with the, the international banking families, man. Beginning with the Rothschilds, the Abrahamers, the DuPonts, the, the Gettys, the, 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 the Rockefellers, man. And all the nobles of all the heathen nations. Your ass is going to be the first fruits of slavery, man. First fruits, the elite of the earth are going to be the first fruits of slavery in the kingdom of heaven, man. So let's read Psalms 149 and 8 one more time so they can get the picture. Psalms 148 and 8. Uh, so Psalms 149 and 8. To bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron. I hope you hear me. You see? I hope you hear me. Psalms 149 and 8. To bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron. Verse 9 says what? To execute upon them the judgment written. This honor, this honor have all his saints. Who are the saints according to the Bible? The Israelites are the saints, man. This is an honor to be able to do this, man. And we're going to revel in it. Psalms 149 and 9 says what? To execute upon them the judgment written. This honor have all his saints. Praise ye, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shah. You see? One day you heathen are going to wake up and you're going to be in shackles and chains, man. As it is written, thus saith Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shah. So with that, I'm going to give all praise, all honor, all glory to Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shah Bahashim Raka Kodash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone for teaching me this truth according to the Bible through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shah and a sincere peace and salutation to all you hopeful to let Akim out there pushing his word in all truth and sincerity, doing the work as Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shah has commanded you to do. With that, I'm going to say Shalom, Wa, Abba, Baba.